What's up everybody, this is Cecil Alexander with Jazz Lesson Videos, and today we're going to be looking at three etudes that cover material from the hard bop era. So hard bop is a subgenre of straight ahead jazz um, that kind of arose in response to bebop, uh, which was characterized by fast tempos um, and often very syncopated rhythms. Uh, hard bop is going to be characterized by bluesy, kind of singable melodies, often slower tempos. Um, it's going to be rearranging some of the compositional elements of the bebop era in different ways. Another characteristic of hard bop is going to be uh, vamps, uh, sitting on one uh, chord for a long period of time. So hard bop um, falls under the straight ahead umbrella, uh, which is also going to encompass um, bebop and post bop as well. So bebop is characterized by faster tempos, um, often very rigid chord changes, a lot of different chord changes passing by very quickly as well, and very uh, syncopated rhythmically. Whereas post bop is going to be focusing on um, non-functional harmony and often just uh, harmonic complexity in general. You're experimenting with some different chord types like uh, major seven sharp fives and uh, borrowed harmony from 20th century classical music. Genre titles can be a nice way of organizing your practice time and even your performing, but at the end of the day, it's all just music. So let's dive into some concepts that are gonna help us play over hard bop tunes. So let's take a look at our first etude on four on six by Wes Montgomery. <laughs> So this tune is going to uh, be incorporating a lot of the common characteristics of hard bop. Uh, we start off with a vamp on G minor 7 uh, for four measures. And then uh, for our next couple of measures, we have um, descending 2-5 starting on C minor 7. So this is going to be kind of, again, rearranging some of those elements of bebop in different ways. We have C minor 7 to F7, B flat minor 7 to E flat 7, then down a half step. A minor 7 to D7, and then up a tritone with our tritone substitute 2 5, E flat minor 7 to A flat 7. Then we vamp on that G minor 7 for four more measures, and then uh, we have a 2 5 into our relative major, B flat major, then a 2 5 back into our relative minor, a G minor. So approaching the uh, vamp on G minor 7, I'm mostly using um, notes of the G blues scale. So if you're not familiar, that's going to be G, B flat, C, D flat, D, and F, so a six note scale. But I'm also trying to create forward motion using um, some substitutes. So I think in my head, uh, G minor 7 is going to be related to C7, kind of the 2-5 relationship. So I use this as an opportunity to play it almost as if it's a cadence into F major. So we start with our bluesy phrases. And once I hit that E natural, the uh, natural 6 of G minor, I go up in E minor 7 flat 5 arpeggio. So this is again thinking about kind of a C7 sort of sound. Then I have this uh, chromatic approach that's going to lead me into the flat seventh of that imaginary C7. So. And then I go up kind of a B flat um, augmented major seven arpeggio. So B flat, D, F sharp, and A. And I use that A as the first note of a chromatic approach into the root, which then is going to become the fifth of C minor seven, the first chord in that series of descending two fives. So I go down um, kind of a 5-3-2-1 shape on C minor 7. Then I grab the fourth or the root of our um, F7, go down chromatically to lead into D flat, which then becomes the 
flat third of our second chord in the series of uh, two fives, B flat minor. So then I have a pivot arpeggio. This is going to be D flat major seven. So note that uh, the arpeggio is kind of inverted. Uh, that's what that pivot is going to mean. So after that pivot arpeggio, I land on B flat, which is going to be the fifth of E flat seven. And then I start kind of a harmonic anticipation of my A minor seven. So I have, right? And I'm really thinking of resolving to that A minor seven almost one beat early, right? So, and then the flat third falls on a strong beat on beat one. Then I have a uh, one, two, three, five cell into the third of D seven, where then I approach F, which is going to be the ninth of my E flat minor seven. So I again have another uh, harmonic anticipation, thinking of that chord one beat early. Then I go down kind of an E flat minor nine idea. I go up to A flat, the root of our A flat seven. And then I uh, go down chromatically into E, which is gonna be the sixth of G minor. And I'm again kind of thinking of this as uh, C7, just going between G minor and C7 for that vamp area, uh, where I then have a um, chromatic approach into D, the fifth, and then I go down kind of an embellished five, three, two, one idea. So here's the five with D, B flat, there's the uh, flat third with A, and then I have a passing tone, A flat, to lead into G. So as you can see, uh, four on six has uh, two elements of hard bop in it uh, with our vamps. We have that vamp over G minor seven and uh, rearranging the compositional elements from bebop using uh, those two fives that are kind of moving around in uh, really an uncommon way in comparison to what we see in bebop tunes. So let's hear the whole etude slowly. And here it is up to speed. So let's check out our second tune. This is going to be Stablemates by Benny Golson. So in Stablemates, uh, this tune is kind of characterized by uh, its uncommon use of the 2-5 progression. Um, the tune starts with this chromatic 2-5 of E minor 7, A7, and then down a half step into E flat minor 7, A flat 7, uh, which is a really cool uh, compositional device for creating a little bit more movement. So over that E minor 7, A7, E flat, A flat, um, I kind of use the same motif more or less. I'm just kind of tying things together with um, eighth notes to uh, connect ideas. So I have an approach into uh, the ninth of that E minor 7, jump up to the root of uh, A7, and then I repeat almost the same idea down a half step. Uh, so E to F is going to be an approach into the ninth of E flat minor seven. Then I grab A flat, G flat, and then I have um, this leap down a six, which is really characteristic of um, bebop lines. And then down a half step to the previous note. So um, G flat, kind of leading into F on strong beats. Uh, then chromatically, I approach E flat. So I have F, E, E flat, then D flat into C, and that's gonna be the seventh of our one major seven chord. And to outline that, I just use a really simple, almost pentatonic-like idea. This could be thought of as F minor pentatonic. So down the scale from C into E flat, and then up to E, which is gonna be the third of that five, seven of three uh, with C7. Then on our C7 at the end of the measure, I have an E diminished seventh arpeggio. So that's gonna give me the third, fifth, flat seven, and flat nine of C7. And then in the next measure on our two, five into G flat major seven, this is one of my favorite devices to use. Um, 
landing on C, which is gonna be the major third of that A flat minor seven, um, but I resolve it in the next beat. So I have this approach of C, D flat into B. So there's our flat third. Then I use a pivot arpeggio off the flat third. So B, E flat, G flat, B flat is gonna be a B major seven arpeggio. Go down the scale into F, and then I use kind of the same device from uh, the four on six etude when I get to the third of this dominant chord, and then I do this stair step motion to get down to uh, the ninth. So from the third, and there's our ninth, uh, and then I go down a five, three, two, one shape, kind of off the fifth of that D flat seven. Voice leading into the fifth of G flat major seven, which is our four in the tune. Then I go up a one, two, three, five melodic cell off the fifth. So D flat, E flat, F, and A flat. Then a G flat major seven arpeggio from the seventh. And then this F is going to uh, be shared between G flat major seven and G minor seven uh, flat five, our next chord of the tune. So I use that as kind of a pivot uh, note. So I have an approach then into the third of C7. Go up a uh, C major triad from the third. Then a uh, voice lead down into the flat third of F minor seven. Where I again have a pivot arpeggio. This is gonna be A flat major seven, but note I'm decorating it with a chromatic approach uh, to the third. So, so B to C, and then the remaining three notes of that um, that pivot arpeggio. Then down to G flat. This is gonna be uh, the flat nine of that F minor seven. And then as an approach into F, uh, which I'm thinking of then is going to be the fifth of B flat seven. Then I go down uh, almost like a half hole diminished excerpt here on B flat seven. Just with a passing tone at the seventh and then a chromatic approach into G flat, which is gonna be the flat third of E flat minor seven. Uh, then I have, again, almost the contour of a pivot arpeggio with that leap down a sixth, back up to the next lowest diatonic note. There's the root. And then in our next measure with our two five into the one, um, I have an approach into the third, up a C minor seven flat five arpeggio. So that's gonna give me the third, fifth, flat seven and nine of A flat seven. And then I end this excerpt of the etude with uh, almost like a Lester Young phrase. This is something he would play a lot over major chords. Right, and he would kind of loop that uh, phrase a lot over um, chord progressions when he was trying to get more of a key center approach. And it's really just like a D flat major six arpeggio. And then at the end of this excerpt, I uh, voice lead down to the fifth of F minor seven. So here's how the etude sounds slowly. And here's how it sounds up to speed. So let's take a look at our third etude, which is going to be Fried Bananas uh, by Dexter Gordon, which is a contrafact over the jazz standard, It Could Happen to You. <laughs> So this tune is going to be characterized by its uh, reworking or rearranging of bebop uh, harmonic concepts. Uh, we have uh, diminished seventh chords, which are going to set up um, the different landing points in the form. Uh, they can also be swapped out for minor two fives. So we start on our E flat major seven on the seventh, and we just go down chromatically to the fifth. 
third. We have a little turn on the third that's a, kind of a nice little bebop decoration. And then over our E diminished, uh, we have this very common kind of Charlie Parker lick, emphasizing that flat nine um, if you're thinking of C7, but that would be the double flat seventh if you're thinking of E diminished. Um, and then we have an approach into the flat third of F minor seven. And then a little um, dance around the ninth of that F minor seven. Then leading into our fourth measure uh, with F sharp diminished, we just uh, kind of use a decorated F sharp diminished seventh arpeggio, resolving into the fifth of E flat, uh, where we kind of imply almost like a five of four here. This is almost outlining like E flat seven especially with that D flat being grabbed in there. It definitely gives you an E flat seven sound. Then over A flat, uh, we just kind of emphasize the major seventh and the ninth with a very similar motif. So here's those two measures together. Then uh, with our two five into F minor, uh, we have a really long double time phrase uh, that's going to be using mostly notes of the C half whole diminished scale. Uh, so here's how the phrase sounds slowly. And note the only note that we have that's outside of that uh, half whole diminished scale is going to be that D natural is just going to be acting as a chromatic approach into uh, E flat, the sharp nine. And then we go down into the fifth of F minor seven. On our F minor seven, uh, we uh, kind of decorate uh, the ninth rhythmically and uh, chromatically a little bit. So with that little trill or tremolo. So after that measure of F minor seven, we land on the 13th or the sixth of B flat seven up to the root and then down to the flat 13th of B flat seven, that G flat. And I use that G flat almost to transition into the tritone substitute. So this is going to be implying E7 then. Landing on the fifth then of our one major seven chord, where I create a motif uh, from the one, uh, then the two, five going into our relative minor. So that motif is going to be. Right? And a little bluesy ending to kind of tie things together. So here's how the etude sounds slowly. Here's how it sounds up to speed. So just to recap, the elements of hard bop that we've covered are going to be vamps. Um, so sitting on one chord for an extended period of time, uh, reworking the compositional elements of bebop in different ways, um, using two fives in kind of uncommon ways that we may not have seen in other uh, subgenres of jazz. Um, emphasis on bluesy, very singable melodies, um, and slower tempos, uh, medium to medium up uh, tempo swing. Um, so if you enjoyed these etudes um, and you want to check out more material like this, feel free to check out my latest resource with Jazz Lesson videos, 25 Hard Bop Etudes, and use the coupon code CA5 to save $5. And please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.